Welcome back to my channel. I ain't been here in a minute, but I got I got a few things. I feel like I'm yelling. Um, welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't been here in a long while, but I have a few things I really want to talk about because I'm just not understanding where the audacity. I'm not understanding the audacity. So the first thing is companies companies feel so obligated to us and we let them we let them do whatever they want to do like okay so i was talking to a coworker today about how i feel like i shouldn't have to sit in the office for a zoom meeting we were having i feel like i could uh, listen to it on my phone on the way home you know or whatever and he was like, um, well, you gotta, if you gotta, if you wanna do the work, if you wanna excel, you gotta go the extra mile, blah, blah, blah. True. But, in the same sense, you're not paying me to stay late here. I could do this on my phone, on my way home. And me going the extra mile has nothing to do with my time. If I choose to go the extra mile between 8 and 5, that's my practice. But I'm not gonna go the extra mile before 8 or after 5 because that's not my prerogative because that's my time we already don't have enough time in the day but you choose to think it's crazy people choose to think that if you want to succeed if you want to go hard you gotta you gotta no sleep work you know no that's not me because when you get to the end of your journey you got success where is your happiness babe where is the fun where, what type of life did you live you know what did you do because for me I'm gonna live my life and you're not gonna make me feel bad because I, I choose to not want to be a part of hustle culture or I choose to not feel like I have to overwork myself to show that I'm a good worker I'm a great worker but I'm not gonna let you maximize my time the time that I already had that I don't really you know have a lot of it's y'all I'm proud at least it, it really just blows me because it's really people out here that will try to make you feel bad because you want to have a balanced life and you want to live your life how you want to live it. And you want to, um, you don't want to give your company your life. That company don't give a fuck about me. Well, I ain't saying my job don't give a fuck about me because they do. They do. It's a great job. But what I'm saying is, my life is not revolved around my job. That's not how I'm going to live. That's why I believe in PTO and taking time off and taking six day and taking vacation day. If I'm not feeling well, I'm taking a mental health day. I believe in it, but I get my work done, but I'm not going to let you overwork me because it's not going to work like that. I, I don't believe and I don't think that that's, you know, my goal in life. My goal in life is not to be this whole, oh, I'm the big dog. No, no, no. I, I, my life is to be comfortable, to be happy with whatever I'm doing, and that's what I'm doing. This shit ain't got real on topic, but I just had to say that because we have normalized letting companies run our life. Like, I know this is a generation of not giving a fuck about a job, but we also a poor generation as well because we don't have a lot of savings. We don't have a lot of, you know, nothing. But some of us do, some of us don't. Me, I don't. But I'm, I'm making it. I'm living like I want to live. But I can't quit my job. I could. I could probably quit it. But I ain't gonna quit it. <laughs> Listen, I really ram like a motherfucker. But the, the the point I'm trying to make is we have we're we've been so indoctrinated to believe that it's okay for companies to try to run our life. I personally don't feel like I have I don't need to go to work from eight to five. I don't need to work eight hours a day. I don't need to work five days a week. I feel like what I could do could be done in three days max, ten to three. Honestly, honestly. I don't feel like, and then also with this whole like even think about working from home. Uh company employees have been more efficient more effective happier but you want to bring them back into the office when they already know they can do their job really well at home see my thing is companies want to run your life and what you're not going to do with car life is run mine like today i supposed to get off at five i'm there at six for the fucking zoom call i'm really pissed off because i just don't feel like i should have to sit at work to be on the zoom call if it's a zoom call i can leave and I should have to stay, like, especially me. I live far away from my job. So that commute already taking part of my time away 
from just me wanting to be leisure. Then we get home, we gotta cook, you gotta clean, you gotta, you know, try to take care of yourself. And by the time you're done with all that, it's bedtime. Like, yeah. I just, I don't know. I, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, I really think I'm overworking. Not overwork. I'm not overworking, but I'm overworking. Like, I really, one, this is not a job. This is not something that I'm really passionate about. I love the job and I love what I do, but I feel like when I get to the point where it's not where I'm at, I get so disconnected from the work. It's just like, I dread going there, which was because I thought the job was going to be something different when I got it, but I mean, you can't really know what a job is until you really get deep into it. And I feel like what I, I don't know what I want to do with my life, so I'm really just going through the motions, like of do do do, which brings me to my next one of me. <laughs> like I really don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm just out here. Like I didn't when I got my master's degree, I I had lots of people all the time. Well, I wanted to work with them, privacy help people, which is true. But she, I didn't want to get no masters. I don't think like I just it just came about. It came in my path. Like I applied to grad school. But I did turn in my transcripts. I don't even think I need a recommendation. But I got in school, you know. So I figured, hey, it came to me. Maybe that's what I need to do. But like me getting my master's was really just like, you need to be doing some kind. You just can't sit at home. So I went to grad school. Love grad school. Love being a GA. You know, all of it. I graduated. I didn't know what I was gonna do. COVID hit. Well, I didn't graduate. COVID hit. Had to move back home. And then, it, like, for, like, two years, I'm living by myself. So, I got to move back home my mama. You know, I'm trying to find a job, trying to save, trying to move back. Because as a GA, you don't get paid a lot. But they pay your way to school. So, I'm just trying to, you know, like, you know, grow up. Because I feel like my life is so stagnant. I don't know where I'm going. I don't want to be stuck. And I don't want to get, you know, down because I'm stuck in this pattern. And then, of course, you know, the comparison to your friends. Which, you know, I stopped that. But it was just like, you got, I got to keep moving. So, um, I ended up getting a job for this home health agency. Oh, terrible. The worst job I've ever had. So unorganized. They didn't want to, they, they reduced my hours <laughs> because I told them I had social anxiety. Ain't that bad a bitch? Like, and then they tried to treat, treat, uh, treat me like I was, you know, like my debt, you know, was a disability that handicapped me when it wasn't. Only thing that I said was that I didn't like to make phone calls. I would rather talk in person. And they was like, is that social anxiety? I like, so, I'm not so much like social anxiety deals with being social. It doesn't matter what form. I'm more co comfortable talking to people face to face than over the phone. I don't know. I, I don't even like to talk to people. When people call my phone, I don't like to talk. I would rather just FaceTime. But anyway, they tried to use that against me, reduce my hours. Then they had, I was hired to be HR. Thought I was gonna be hiring people, orientation. No, I'm the receptionist, I'm marketing, I'm graphic design, I'm everything. So I'm like, and I was stressed, so stressed about the job because I hated it. I hate, I did not, I like, I would wake up every day crying, anxiety, panic attacks. Cause I just hated the job because it was so unorganized. It was a new business. They was like, we'll take new ideas. I'm trying to perceive new ideas, easier ways to function, easier way, you know, better ways to grow, nothing. So I'm just like, if you're not going to take my help and my assistance, you got me doing three jobs, you don't want to pay me, and you cut my hours. And by then, I had, like, just moved out. But I was making it because I had a good savings. But, like, this shit, and then I knew I didn't want to do it. So on that Monday, I was just like, all of this is going to circle back in a minute. I was just like, I'm going to quit this job because I can't do it. And I sat in my car outside of my job. I had a panic attack. And as soon as I was going to text my boss and be like, this is my last day, my teacher called me and was like, hey, I got a job off for you. Hey, I got a job off for you. You know, do you, me. Of course I want to do it, blah, blah, blah. She told me where it was at. I had my interview like that Wednesday. I had my interview like... No, I had my... I was trying to quit on the Monday. I had my interview on Tuesday. I was hired Wednesday. I sent my resignation, my resignation letter Tuesday after I left the interview because I knew I would get a job because, you know, that bitch. But I sent it Tuesday... I was like, hey, I gotta go. And so, what I'm saying is, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I really just be having so much shit built up, and I don't be wanting to complain to my friends all the time. 
So I'm probably gonna do this shit weekly. Just invent about stuff because that job really put me through the ringer because it was so fucking unnecessary. The job could have been so simple, could have been, you know, real easy, but you don't even wanna. Girl, then I uh I thought I had COVID one time. She gonna tell me. I had I thought I had COVID and we had a person coming in for an interview. And she was like, just put your mask on. Bitch, are you stupid? I'm literally shaking like I did have cold. I guess I just was having a cold or something. But bitch, I'm here to check. You tell me my mask on every day later. And when that lady showed up, I sat there and got cold and she left me here. Like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, I just, no, I did not like that job at all. <sighs> Let me see. It was something else I wanted to uh, talk about, y'all. I can't even think right now. Um. Let me think. Let me, let me think real quick. I don't know. But, but before I make this video, it was really about companies wanting to be your motherfucking mommy and daddy. And that's not going to happen. So, if you want me to act to five, my country say act to five. Now, mind you, my country do stay, you know, if you work at the hours. But that's if we're driving somewhere. We get paid for it, you know, for our travel and for that. But, no, like, you can't do that. And then, especially if it's last minute, you can really go to hell at that point because... Y'all, I just had this weird way of thinking and the way I'm living my life right now is really if I want it, if I don't want it, excuse me, if I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. And I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, try to explain and prove my point to you because I don't give a fuck what you think because this is about me. Which brings me to my next one. That was my next one right there. Y'all, for the past three months, I've been depressed. Like, ask my friends. A, a, a girl, I don't call myself a bitch because I need to stop that. But I've been coming home like crying, mad, wasn't eating right, none of that. Boo doo boo, just sad, you know. Like I really was just not having life at that point. Like I was really, I'm out of here. Like you know, I don't know if you people know, but now y'all know. And I was just sad. Then I just woke up one day, was like, "Bitch, you're sad." <laughs> it's so funny now because God got me together, baby. You're sad because of other people's perception of you. You're not even sad because of something you did. You say it because of something you think other people want you to be. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm out here sad because of what I think I'm supposed to be or what. Not what I think I'm supposed to be, but what I think people see me as. I don't know what they see me as. Don't go fuck at this point how you see me. But you, I'm, I'm trying to down bad. It's like, oh, like, I'm not, I'm not just doing enough. Like, you know. And I'm just like, girl, you are fucking, ha you are really in your prime. Like, no cap, like, I'm in my prime. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm in my prime. My first prime, because I feel like in life you can have multiple primes. But I'm in the first prime of my life, because back in the past, back in the day, I really was, you know, a timid little, let people run over me, let people talk shit, you know, not even giving a fuck about how I look, you know, you know, just really wasn't. But now, like, I, I, after that moment, that realization, I woke up and just was like, Girl, what are you doing? These people, you don't need to give a fuck about nobody but your still. That's why when I go out, when I take pictures, when I do what I do, it's because of me. I don't, I don't care. This video, ain't, you, ain't nobody you might probably talk to myself, but it's because of me because it's a good way for me to, you know, it's a hobby. So I just be looking like, girl, like you was really out here damn bad because of imaginary shit. Imaginary thoughts. Imaginary trauma you to put on yourself that ain't nobody even putting that pressure on you. Yeah, they might be talking about you, but shit, they ain't saying it to your face. And if they was, so what? So what? You get what I'm saying? So what? Like, I used to be out here like, oh my God, I can't go out. I'm so fat. I'm so this. I'm so that. Like, even taking pictures, I would try my best to suck in and do this angle. But now, because I be thinking, girl, they know you fat. They say you ain't perfect. What the hell are you doing? You look stupid as fuck. You stupid. Like, I... The point, like, I don't understand. I don't think y'all understand, like, the point of happiness. And cause, I'm not going to say contentment, but, like, the point I am right now is just, like, the pinnacle of this is Kat. This, this, this is who she is. Like, ain't no change with her. Ain't nothing you can say, do none of that. I don't give a, I don't give a rat's ass about none of that. I just live my life now. I know I done got way off on the first time, but we gonna sum it now. Living your life for you is the best thing you could do. Like, just even if you don't know what you're doing, even if you wanna 
cut your hair, change your job, it don't matter. Just do it for you. As long as you ain't doing nothing that's in, endangering yourself or just, you know, putting you down, just do it. Like, it been so much shit that happened to me in the past couple of months, and I just been like, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. And, and no, I don't have the greatest relationship with God, but I know he working on me. Like, he trying. I'm trying. We getting there. We, you know, we doing what we got to do because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to talk to him. I don't know how to hear him. But it's like when I do, when something happens, I know it's him. And, I, and you know, so, so I was getting on myself about that too because I feel like I didn't have a connection that I needed with God. But what got me through was that, like, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. Like, I'm really trying to do, you know, like, I don't do nothing that's ungodly or, you know, like that. Like, I'm living my life according to what a Christian is. Maybe not everything. But, you know, like, you know, like, praying. Like, I don't know how to pray. That wasn't indoctrinated me when I was little. Like, I don't know. I haven't found a church home. Don't get me started on that because I saw a post. It's like, you know why? Um, why this generation, young people, you know, let me, try, let me tell you why I love my church, baby. Because every Sunday, it was about money. Everything he wanted to preach about, about money. Burning bush, money. No on the ark, money. He charged him to get on the ark, baby. Part the Red Sea money. Like, it was just, I didn't like it. And I'm just like, this is, I want to learn. I want to learn about the word of God. I want to be, I want to have a church family. I want to be, you know, engulfed in the spirit of the Lord. And my church was not giving, it was just too messy. It was just money, money, money. It's this, that. It just, it was not for me. And yes, that's what my family went to church. But I knew at a young, I knew at a real young age that they went to church for me. So like, that's probably why I strayed further. Like, I didn't have a lot of judgment for people in my church, you know. So, that was the, it was just the, really the pastor. I thought the pastor was trash. And if, you, if somebody from church watching this and you feel some type of way, I do apologize. But you have to tell yourself the truth. And you know it's the truth that every message go back to money. And it shouldn't go back. If you're teaching me what the word says, I know every verse in that book ain't about no money. Ain't about getting a check. Ain't about donating to the church. Ain't about, No. It's not. So then I did find another church that I like, but I didn't like the way that they praise God. And, I, and I'm not judging how they praise God or, what, or the way they worship, but it just made me uncomfortable. And you know, you should be in the house of the Lord the way you're comfortable. And I wasn't comfortable. Even though I love the pastor, because that pastor, baby, when I say she taught me, she taught me I learned. But it's just like the way they worship, I just feel uncomfortable because everybody seemed so here with the Lord and I was here and I know comparison, but I just it just wasn't, you know, the vibe for me. So I still have I found another church home. Not another church, but another church to go to. And I went for vacation Bible school and I loved it. Like all the days I went with the whole week, I loved it. Then I went um I'm gonna end this. This, this shit out on 20 minutes. Then I went to, um, oh, I'm cussing Lord. Excuse me. I went to like a regular service and they were telling me where to sit. And I know you think, God, that's crazy. You're gonna let a seat to see you from the Lord. It wasn't about to see. It was just that you put me in a place where I can't even get comfortable and be in the Word of God. Like, I'm so uncomfortable. They making me scoot down like we in the auditorium and get ready for a program. Like, that had made me so uncomfortable. I had so much anxiety. Like, I just want to be able to be free. If I'm in the house of the Lord and I'm with the Word of God, I want to be free. You feel me? I want to be, you know, comfortable. But, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm probably going to do these weekly because I like this. It's a great way to be. And, yeah. Um, I have a new motto. My old motto used to be drink water, mind your business. But now my motto is uh, to life, love, and liberty. And that just means, you know, live life, love yourself, love people around you, you know, spread love, and be free. Be free to do you. Be free to do whatever you want to choose. As long as they put you or nobody else at risk. So to life, love, and liberty. And y'all have a good day.